Hey, good morning, everyone. Hello. Welcome. Let me turn down this music a bit. It's too early. Thank you for joining me here on the show version live stream where I talk about some network engineering, wireless certifications like today. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why should why you should go for the CCMP enterprise core certification. That's what I'm going for, thinking about doing. Uh, Sai, thank you for, for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being awake wherever, where, where are you coming from today? Uh, where are you guys located and what time is it? While I take a sip of coffee. All right. So one of the things that that's been on my mind for a while is the CCNP certification. Uh, it's undergone some some changes, right? You guys have have seen the updates from Cisco back in February. They've got a new. They released the new certification at the end of the month, and uh, I've been curious, like what what is the CCNP about, and how different is it from the previous ones. And I just want to thank you for, for joining me here today, Alexan Alexander Alexandre from Brazil and Jace from Austin. Yeah, love Austin, especially, uh, oh man, just slipped my mind, that street in Austin with all the, uh, the bars there. <laughs> so the, the history that I have with the CCNP, so I've always, uh, I've always had my CCNA, I've had it for, for a long time, uh, it's probably one of the hardest exams that I've taken, probably. It's, it's a pretty good exam. And then I uh, retook the CCNA, I, get, I think, two years ago. No, was it last year? Cisco Live in San Diego. I had to renew my, my CCNA because it was due. And originally, I was going to do CCIE wireless just to see what that exam is about. But I knew I wasn't going to pass it, so I changed it last minute and uh, decided to just renew my CCNA. I hadn't hadn't looked at the objectives and just decided to take it. What? How much did I know off the top of my head? So luckily, I passed it. I think the biggest concern for me was uh, IPv6 because I I don't really work with IPv6 that much. And then uh, over the course of that time, I've looked at some other certifications and I would just, I, I was just never sure what I wanted to pursue and up until last year of October, 2019 is when I decided to take the DevNet associate, which I ended up getting about two days after it was released. So I was very happy about that. Cause that's where I, I, I want to learn more about is the network automation. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to get into network automation a little bit, why don't I really understand what goes on in the network, uh, starting with the CCNP? And what I mean is to like understand more routing in depth. And I do a lot of switching, so I think 
switching was a little bit more more easier for me. And so if you guys think uh, like CCMP is worth going for, let me know early on here in the chat what you think. Uh, in a, uh, ha do you have your CCMP? Are you thinking about it? And then hit the hit that like button if you want to hear more. All right, so my history with the CCMP and why I've been, I don't know, slow to to take on this certification is uh, a long time ago, many, many years ago, I took the CCMP switch. And this is before I was really in the networking uh, as much as I am now as a network engineer. Uh, before, I was an IT manager who, who actually uh, was in a lot of different network environments. So I was able to get my experience that way. And so I passed that exam. I thought that one was pretty good, understanding uh, Cisco switches in, in detail. And then I started to pursue CCMP route. Now that exam, to me, was a lot more difficult because of how much you had to know about routing protocols. And if you don't use these routing protocols that often, then you're gonna run into some challenges where it will be more difficult to learn. And, and that's where a lot of labbing, um, having a lab will be really beneficial if you're gonna study some route because you can set up a topology and play with EIJRP or OSPF, uh, B BGP. And luckily they've removed some of these older protocols because they, I don't think anyone uses them, but hopefully you don't use the older protocols like frame relay. I think that was still in the exam, right? Um, Jace, you say you have a CCMP wireless, but likely to retest or go another route, not ready for CC CCIE. Yeah, so that's a big jump. And uh, I'll probably talk about a little, uh, my opinion on the CCIE later on, although it seems like an easier way to get there right now, right? You just need your CCMP enterprise core, a specialist exam, and then you should be able to, actually you should be able to just go straight to the CCIE. But uh, so curious for me, why, why did I stop, right? Why did I stop at uh, switch? Because I had taken CCMP route, I believe two times and failed both times nowhere near close to passing. I think I was about 50 to 60%. And I know my study methods were not very good back then. I'm, I'm a terrible test taker. Uh, I don't like studying for exams, but now I've taken a much different approach to things and I take my time in really understanding how things work and then try to perform them myself more in a lab environment. And that's how I was able to pass the uh, DevNet Associate uh, even though I don't have any programming or network automation experience, I was able to uh, use my laptop. I use Atom a lot on MacBook Pro to create code uh, that I learned using on the developer.cisco.com website. They have a lot of free labs there, so I utilize that to, uh, as much as possible. And uh, Sai, say you're preparing for CCMP on core looking at DevNet Associate also, by the way. I, I highly recommend a DevNet Associate because I thought I learned a lot from there. And after taking the DevNet Associate, I was actually able to create a script for myself at work in which I autom automated a lot of um, manual labor where I was moving devices from one network to another. And I had to use CLI for a system that we use. And so instead of... Um, trying to, one, identify all those devices, their IP addresses and MAC addresses, and then modify what network they were on. I used a script to make all those queries, and then uh, depending on what network those devices were on, I would create CLI statements that um, in the script that would then create, uh, I'm sorry, that it would create a CLI statement, which would then move them to a new network. And that was, that saved me hours, maybe days worth of, of work. And so I felt like the DevNet Associate helped me get there. And will the DevNet Associate help you in CCMP Enterprise Core? A little bit, because uh, I will talk about the network automation piece that's on, on CCMP on Core or Enterprise Core. 
And so I, I stopped a long time ago with the CCNP uh, when I failed route about twice. I felt I was not prepared for routing uh, and, and at the CCNP level, so I've just never pursued it since. And so instead, I looked at things like the associate level certifications like DevNet, associate, and also CCNA wireless. I have that as well. And I don't even know how that translates over to the new certification scheme. I think I have some sort of badge that says I did some wireless training. <laughs> so the changes to the Cisco certifications, um, there are new changes, right? So I, I've, after taking DevNet Associate, I feel I could take on the CCNP now. And I like the idea of doing the, the, the new certification model for CCMP, which is you take this, this enterprise core uh, certification, which has the foundations for routing, switching, uh, some, some network automation, the infrastructure side, uh, there's virtualization, and then you pick a specialization. And for me, I feel I want to dive into the wireless side of things for the for the, the specialization, kind of like how JC mentioned you have your CCMP wireless. CCMP wireless is different, right? Right. If you've looked at the certifications, uh, I, I know like study materials from the previous CCMP wireless was was non-existent, right? You had to learn on your own. Um, but I'm kind of Personally, I feel like I, I, I have always learned on my own, so I've never really settled on using some sort of official certification guide. Uh, Cisco's got a lot of their documentation freely available online, so I felt that if you wanted to learn something uh, Cisco-wise, you know, since it's a Cisco certification, you could search for that um, in Cisco's documentation, their configuration guides, and try to understand things that way. It's just not in a nicely formatted um, you know, book that they give you, and then it's easy for you to study. You had to do a lot of digging. Um, but yeah, CCMP, uh, sorry, what, C CCMP Wireless, yeah, is the previous version. And there, I think there were like four or five exams that you had to pass in order to get your CCMP Wireless. So that is my, my end goal, is to get CCMP Enterprise Core and then take a wireless specialization exam and there's two wireless exams i believe the uh, a design exam ccmp level and also the uh, implementation part where that one's more cisco centric uh so I'm, I'm going for the implementation part it, the the design aspect of things I, I i would rather tell people to look at the cwnp and look at design from a um a neutral perspective uh, from a from an understanding wireless down at the fundamental RF and, and not from a vendor's perspective. And that's just my take on it. So I like the that idea of enterprise core and then the specialization exam and, and then I would pick wireless for that specialization. I got a, the morning motorcycle passing by. <laughs> There's somebody here in my neighborhood that just got a brand new motorcycle because I've never heard it before. Or they just moved in. And uh, he loves to ride it very loudly early in the morning. <laughs> so the, the CCMP uh, Enterprise Core is a little bit different now, right? And I'm looking, I was looking at the objectives. It's not as intense as the previous C CCMP. Uh, so to recap, there's about... 10%, like the curious things to me was, was virtualization covers about 10% of that exam, but it's not the virtualization you would think, right? It's not like VMware virtualization, but it's more about uh, VRF, GRE, uh, VXLAN, and LISP. So it, it is a little bit more focused on what may be used today versus what has been used uh, five years ago. So that's good. Um, definitely use uh, VRFs or VRFs, however you want to call it. But where my weak area would be is around uh, uh, Lisp and VXLAN, GREs. I, I'm not building GRE tunnels every day, but I, I do know how VRFs work. 
but it is only 10% of that CCMP certification. Now, the heart of the CCMP Enterprise Core is going to be the uh, infrastructure section, which covers 30% of this exam. This is the core of it, the enterprise core. <laughs> so you're going to cover things like switching concepts. You have to understand how a switch works. Um, and I feel like a lot of these topics have been carried over from the CCNA. Um, but it's a very basic switch concepts, uh, spanning tree protocol, and uh, um, understanding how MAC addresses are learned on a switch port. And, you know, I got, I got the objectives here. So this is the book that I am going to use to learn. And you can tell I still have it bookmarked on chapter one. <laughs> so I have the objectives here, which I've written a lot of notes, right? I looked at the book. I looked at the objectives. And so on the back of the objectives, I wrote out a plan. You probably can't see it. And I tried to articulate that but the the switching concepts so under under infrastructure which is 30 percent of this exam you've 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 got to understand layer two but at a very basic level from from what i can see things like trunk uh, troubleshooting trunking that to me that's pretty uh easy and straightforward ether channels and spanning tree and then uh Sticking to like layer two, they've they put in some wireless concepts in here. So I think that's really great because of how wireless is now the the most used method to access any kind of resource on the internet. Wireless is going to be a very important um, skill for any network engineer to learn. I, I mean, everyone uses wireless. It's deployed everywhere, but no one or not not no one, but there's not a lot of people that put a focus on really making a great wireless network because I don't think a lot of people fully understand how complex it could be, uh, but it's easy to install. You just can't see it, right? You, you install an access point and there's signal. And so they've, they've added concepts in there like RF power, RSSI, SNR. So you got to understand a lot of these. Um, and, and some of these are, already talked about on a CWNP level where you understand those fundamental concepts of how Wi-Fi works. And then you have to understand on the Cisco side, um, AP models, controller-based models, cloud-based access points. So that that's pretty simple. I think the wireless portion is going to be easy for me because I focus a lot on wireless. But where I see the challenges <clears throat> for me is, is now diving into things like layer three. So I've been primarily like a layer two, two guy switching and wireless. Uh, I have touched routing, but I don't do it on a regular basis. I'm not constantly troubleshooting routing and, and configuring routing. And so we've got concepts like EIGRP. And the last time I touched EIGRP was about over five years ago. The last environment I was in, I had to configure EIGRP. It was already there. So as I added routers, I had to using EIGRP, which is a lot easier to use than, say, something like OSPF. And so with OSPF, you have to understand uh, the difference between, um, uh, like, what's an advanced distance vector versus a link state, and then load balancing, path selection. So all of that with OSPF versus ERGRP is, is going to be key, right? And so as I look at these objectives, the other thing, too, is understanding how to read these objectives because the, the, the reason why I say some of this, is, uh, this version of CCMP seems to be a bit easier compared to the last version is layer, one of the objectives for layer three just starts with compare. Compare routing concepts of EIGRP and OSPF. So at that point, you just have to understand the differences between the two as they even mention, like what's the difference between the two with metrics, path operations, path selection. So read those objectives carefully um, even though I feel layer three will be challenging, some of the objectives are pretty easy. Now, the, the part where it does get, uh, where you do need to lab is where it says configure. And so when Cisco says to, when they list EIGRP, nowhere in the objectives do I see that you are actually configuring EIGRP. 
the two routing protocols that you're going to configure is OSPF and BGP. And so those two are going to be my challenge, right? It's been a long time since I've actually played with OSPF and BGP. I currently work in an environment that has the two, but I'm not actively working with those protocols. I'm more in the layer two, like I said, layer two uh, switching and wireless. And so my goal there for me is to use uh, Cisco Modeling Labs, the personal edition that I, I did acquire a while back. And if, you, if you've seen my previous uh, live streams, I did go into uh, CMLP for uh, a little bit and kind of gave my opinion on it. But now I'll form a more uh, accurate opinion as I use CMLP as a way to study for the CCMP Enterprise Core. And, and so layer three is going to be a challenge, especially now then when you get into BGP, because BGP, you got to know uh, Beth, uh, path selection. I know there's a lot of different um, metrics that are used. Uh, and, and so once I get into that, I'll probably create videos as well to try to help me. Um, so, the reason, so, so one of the reasons why I create these videos is one, to help me explain some of these topics to you so I can help teach you how to do these, but also for my benefit, if, if I can teach it to you, then I have fully learned the concept as well. So then after we've got layer three, we've got things like uh, IP services, which is included in that infrastructure. And IP services is, are things like uh, network time protocol, uh, NAT and PAT, and then uh, first hopper density protocols, HSRP and VRRP. Those things are going to be pretty cool to configure in a lab environment. So we'll, we'll play with that, really understand how that works. And then uh, the, the new things in CCNP is you've got the addition of DNA Center, which is the one thing I'm not very excited to learn about. And I've never been on um, the train to, to like DNA Center. Uh, I, I don't want to use it for... There's a couple of reasons why, but we're going to have to learn DNA Center, uh, at least know about it and what it does and how it works with the network. Uh, and then the other new portions to the CCMP, which I'm excited about, which is why I took the uh, DevNet Associate, is the automation portion. So you've got to learn uh, RESTConf, NetConf, uh, basic Python, and APIs. And, and so this is on a very basic level. You don't have to be a, an experienced programmer uh, or, or be experienced in Python to really understand this portion of the exam. So uh, automation is a very small portion of the CCMP. It is about 15%, but still more than virtualization. And, and so automation is going to be a big piece moving forward. It's, it's definitely a huge focus if you've never seen Cisco push the uh, DevNet section. If you haven't, then uh, you should really pay attention because they are pushing network automation very hard. They've got a whole huge community behind it. They've got all the new DevNet certifications and uh, the DevNet Associate will help for this section of automation. If you've got your DevNet Associate, that 15% will be very easy for you on this certification. So as I talk myself through on why why I should take this uh, CCMP Enterprise Core. If you think I should, as I've already talked about it, hit that like button. I want to know, should I pursue it and then also share my experience as I, as I study for this certification and, and show, show you guys some labs, what I'm doing, maybe some late live streams where I go through a specific topic and tackle it. So for example, uh, if... One of the obje objectives is to learn OSPF. Maybe I should do a, a live stream and uh, start doing some OSPF labs. What do you think? And James, uh, you are correct. If you have the DevNet Associate, that automation portion will be a piece of cake because they go into detail of the automation section in the DevNet Associate and they do it in much more detail. So, so I've, I've, I've asked myself two questions. Why should I take CCMP Encore and why not? Uh, one of the primary reasons is really for education. I want to further my learning. I, I really like to learn new things. I am a network engineer, so it makes sense to 
to learn CC, the topics of CCMP Enterprise Core. Even if it's not my, my, my main duty at work, I could be uh, you know, someone who can help out um, when the time comes. So that's the primary uh, reason. I am a network engineer. I work on networks. I know the network. This will help me understand it even further. I could use the, my work environment to further um, take these topics and ingrain them in my mind just by using show commands and, and seeing how the network is put together by other architects. Uh, I have access to Cisco Modeling Labs Personal Edition. So I have the means to study for it. I don't need any more physical hardware. I can just use uh, a virtual instance that I have on a brand new lab server that I created, which means I should probably start using that equipment a little bit more and uh, make that investment worth it. Uh, one of the things that I would be looking forward to learning is BGP and maybe something new in the automation portion that, that's included in that certification guide. Uh, BGP to me is probably one of the most interesting routing protocols. It's been, been around for a long time. And you could see that they will talk about BGP. Look how thick this CCMP, uh, I guess if you, if you read the title, maybe it's not as thick as it should be, right? CCMP and CCIE Enterprise Core. So uh, this could help you get ready for the, for the CCIE. And when I look at the routing section uh, for CCMP, actually, they do have EIGRP in here. It's a very small chapter, though, compared to OSPF. There's advanced OSPF and then BGP and advanced BGP. Uh, quite a huge section where, we're, where they're going to talk about BGP messages and all that stuff. So this primary method of what I would use to study right now, which you can get at Cisco Press. They're, they always do some sales. So that's why I should take it. I have the book. I have the resources. Um, so... Last night, I talked I, I talk myself through on why I should not go for the CCNP. Uh, the, the main thing is time. Time, uh, do, do I have the time to study for this certification? And I, maybe I can utilize some of my time at work as I'm in a bunch of network hardware. I could try to study that way. Uh, I have the day job. I've got the side gig, which is keeping me busy lately. And then uh, I have the family. So I have two kids, and I got to be sure I dedicate my time to them. So that leaves me a few times to study, which is either early in the morning, like now, where everyone's asleep, or really late at night. So I used to be a guy who, who stayed up really late at night to do anything I wanted to do. So I could dedicate some time to stay up later, some late night study sessions, but then that would, I would be sacrificing some sleep because I've been trying to get about seven to eight hours of sleep lately. I, I have done long stretches. I have been doing long stretches of really short periods of sleep. And it's, and over time it just started affecting me, my mood, the way I treat people. And so I've been trying to go to sleep earlier and wake up a little bit later, especially during, um, you know, shelter in place. And so with that, I, I don't have to study every day, but I could set dedicated days where I do study. It would just prolong the certification study and to the point where I get, get to the exam. But hey, I'm still studying for, for Enterprise Core. The, the other reason why... I, why not to take the exam is just excuses, right? So all I'm doing is giving you excuses. If, if I really wanted to take this exam, I would find a way, right? I just sacrifice something else. Uh, the only thing I will not sacrifice is my time with my family. So uh, I just got to find time elsewhere to fit this in. So maybe in the morning, maybe these live streams are more about f more focused towards CCMP uh, versus anything else. It's just a matter of, uh, uh, scheduling things properly, uh, making sure my time is all well allocated and then uh, my kids have uh, 
activity. So like my, my son's in, in Cub Scouts, so I got to be sure I address that. Got to be sure I schedule things when when I have to travel for my side gig, uh, where which I had to do this week. Uh, I thought about bringing the CCMP book, but that book is just, it's too big. Uh, it's too heavy. I'm already carrying a lot of equipment. And then uh, probably the more common excuse or or fear that people have and why they don't go for a certification is the fear of failing. And so that's failing the exam, right? Failing the exam could be uh, you have a fear that you don't want to pay for the exam again. I know a lot of people pay out of pocket to take these certification exams. That's not an inexpensive uh, exam, right? Uh, so yeah, there's a fear of that. Uh, and then there's the fear of just not passing. People are afraid of failure, um, but I'm no stranger to that, right? I, I, I thought that through and I said, you know, but I have failed route a couple times. I failed wireless. Exam. You know, CCNA wireless, I failed that exam, I think, once. Uh, and I thought I knew that material. Uh, so I have failed before. And I, I'm glad I didn't fail DevNet Associate because I studied hard for that exam. So I, I'm going to take what I've learned from studying for DevNet Associate and apply that same method for CCNP. And so what does that mean? after I talk myself through that. It sounds like I should go for it. I should just create a study plan, uh, that it, figure out how many times a week I should study for specific topics and be sure to cover those in an efficient way, probably do it more in a lab type uh, scenario to really understand it. But I gotta incorporate the theory somehow. So I gotta read some of the chapters in the book um, and attack it by lab. So create these labs in Cisco modeling labs, personal. And then uh, because of CMLP, I, I am able to share those labs. So what do you guys think about sharing CCNP labs? If you have CMLP, you would be able to upload that into your um, instance and be able to try that out yourself. Um, so I could put that up on my site. So in about 30 minutes, uh, I think I've determined that CCNP Enterprise Core would be worth going after. What do you guys think? I have created a study plan so I could see, let's, let me see if I could share it. I took some time doing the plan because I felt that was that's what's most important. All right. So I called it 60 days to CCMP. And I came up with 60 days. And it doesn't have to be 60 continuous days, just 60 days worth of studying. And the way I came up with the study plan is I looked at the objectives and I looked at the, the book, the, this book. The official cert guide. So this study plan is modeled after that certification guide. And so if you take a look at the chapters, uh, I weighed out how long, these, how long it would take me to read some of these chapters and then do things like the chapter quiz, the uh, memory tables that, are, that, are, um, that come with the book, and then also working on labs. And so that was kind of the core of what I should do for each chapter. And so if we look at this, the first thing to do is uh, the practice quiz. So if you get the book or you, you, know, you, you purchase the practice exam, the first thing to, to do that you should do before reading the book or before studying for it is understanding where you are when it comes to this topic, to CCMP Enterprise Core. So you take that quiz and then you will know where all your weak areas are. Maybe your weakest areas. Maybe you're brand new to, to CCMP Enterprise Core. But I don't know. If you're taking CCMP Enterprise Core, you know something about networking. So I would definitely take the practice quiz and figure out where you're strong and where you're weak. And you could slice and dice this study plan. You, maybe you don't have to read Chapter 1. Maybe your weakest area is BGP and you could start there. But if you wanted to tackle it from chapter one to the last chapter, which is chapter 18, you can totally go for uh, go, go that route. This is just how I would approach it. So I would, uh, so day one is like take that practice quiz. To, um, I find quizzes to be draining, so I would just leave day one as for the practice quiz. <laughs> 
then you know where your weaknesses are and you could adjust to ju adjust a plan how you feel fit. So I figured one day for packet forwarding, you know, so this will this will be the same for for any chapter. Take the chapter quiz and by chapter quiz. So in the, in the beginning of the book, there's always this chapter quiz. Uh, what I would do is just take the chapter quiz first before reading the chapter just to see where you're at um, with the material of that chapter. Do not look at the uh, explanations to the answers. So what I do is I take the chapter quiz. I just see what the answer is. Did I get it right or wrong? You know, is, one, is the answer to 1A? No. All right, I got it wrong. But I don't read into why the answer, what the answer is. Because what I don't want to do is memorize uh, the letter answer for, for the question. Because you're going to retake it. So if I don't score like 80% or higher or 90% or higher, then uh, at the like at the end of reading, reading this chapter, then you have to review that material again, right? So, so by the time you go reading through your chapter, you work on your labs, you do some memory tables, you retake that chapter quiz. Did you score higher than the first time you took that chapter quiz? If you did not score higher than 80 or 90%, go back and read the material and do more labs. Uh, you do not move forward with, or do not pass this chapter. Yeah? Do not pass go. So once you've complete that, you know, you write your scores here. It's just the way for me to track. I'm into data collection, so I just want to see how I'm doing. You can mark that off. Then you move on to the next chapter. And so chapter one, you're probably not going to do a lot of labs. I added it there anyway. But as you get into these chapters, then labs come, in, come into play. And so you can see uh, day four. What the heck did I do? Why did I do day four? Oh. So, so like you can see on day two, I'm spending two days on packet forwarding. I think that's what I wrote there. That's what I did. Yep, two days on packet forwarding. And then two days spent on spanning tree protocol. One day on the other. So that's what that means. Like on day four, that's when you start. So you have day four and five to, to learn that topic. Then on day six, you do the next topic. So I'm ded I dedicated one day to just advanced SCP tuning because I felt that it wasn't as heavy as chapter two. So it just had some advanced concepts there. And then uh, multiple spanning tree protocol, I uh, figured one day for that as well. Some of these you may be able to condense into two days. Like I'm looking at this from a day perspective and not necessarily, all right, I'm gonna tackle chapter four and five in one day, for example. I thought, I thought that was uh, too intense. I already think doing this 60 days 60 days to CCMP is pretty intense. But you can, you can stretch those days out. You know, it's just, just a template that I created, a, an example. So this is mainly based on my experience and, and what I feel like what I can do reading the book and labs. So chapter five, uh, spend about two days on that. And then I incorporated breaks because in the past when I have studied, I did not take breaks. Uh, when you don't take a break, your mind just starts to melt and you will get nowhere. Things start to, to look weird. You, you're not understanding things properly. And that's when you need to get outside, do something different, move your body, get your mind thinking differently, you know, get the blood flowing. And so you, you need to take a break. Add as many breaks as you want, but don't ruin your, your study flow because you don't want to study too long for this exam and then uh, forget some of the topics uh, down uh, in the previous and so that's why when you, you can see how I have sections here there's a forwarding section then there's a layer two section because that's how the book is laid out and you can see how you've got take chapter quiz and then retake the chapter quiz but at the end of this section you're going to take the practice quiz again and by take the practice quiz it's just for these chapters so the I took a quick look at the at the practice quiz I think it is uh, available online. You register the book, you'll get access to to the practice tests. There's, I think, two different banks. You can select what chapters to use for the chapter quiz. So I would, when you get to this point, take practice quiz, you're taking it on chapters eight and before that. So chapters one through eight. Then you take your break, go into routing, the heavy stuff, and you just repeat the process. Except I put a I put a two-day break in between here after OSPF version 3. 
because I think after you've done OSPF and you get to this point, you'll be uh, pretty exhausted. And then you'll jump into the heavy stuff, BGP, advanced BGP, and multicast. Then you'll take that practice quiz again, right? And then uh, we'll go into services. Starts to get a little bit easier. And then uh, wireless. Wireless might be hard for some of you guys, but um, I've already started working some videos about this. I mean, I did my last live stream was on wireless uh uh, infrastructure, which was creating an SSID with WPA2 pre-shared key. So you can take a look at that. And you may not have, so this may be harder for people to lab on because this would require you to have a Cisco access point and or a controller. And then troubleshooting as well. So some of these you can use your own wireless to troubleshoot, but the Cisco specific stuff will be a challenge. And then we go into the architect architecture side of things, which dedicate about one day for each of those. And then by the end of it, you do a full practice quiz at the end, review those memory tables. I suggest creating your own memory tables as well to memorize things that you would need to know. Um, actually, different strategy. Memorize things you would need to know in the exam so you don't have to keep uh, digging in your mind. So what I do is there's certain things like maybe the BGP metrics. There's a long list. Uh, you may want to memorize those. And then when you get to the to do the exam, when you get that dry erase, um, write them all down so you don't have to think about them uh, while you're taking the exam. Just you can peer onto your your dry erase sheet. So you 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 do the full practice quiz at the end. Your final prep. You're going to go f uh, review those memory tables and you're going to lab, 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 right? You, you constantly want to do these labs to, to put these topics just stuck in your head so you, you, just, you, you know them in your sleep. You start dreaming about them. And then by the time you start doing your, your practice quiz and you get 90% or higher, I would say that's about time you could take the exam. Now, you, you could be like me. I don't schedule my exam till much later. Um... Or you can set that as your goal and set your set, schedule your exam the moment you start studying for it. I mean, it's, it's, it's up to you. But that's my plan. That's what I want to talk about. I, I was thinking about this the whole time, creating this plan, and I can share it with you guys as well. But I think that's how I'm going to study for the CCMP. I may utilize these live streams as a way to study for it and then um, go through my Cisco modeling labs as a way to show those labs and fully understand the topics. I think the hardest part for me is just going to find time for reading. So I may read in the evenings or early mornings, uh, depending on, on how my schedule fits. But I think I've determined it. We're going to go for We're going to go for it, right? We're going to go for <laughs> CCNP. Does anybody want to tackle CCNP with me? Let me know. I think I will create a study group on my uh, on my Discord server that I, I just started. So the Discord server is new to me. It's just for for network engineering. It's not a wireless specific like like this the other Slack that I manage. And so there are a couple of us in there who are network engineers. And I think I will start posting more CCNP enterprise core related things in that Discord server and create a study group around it. So. Uh, the other things I'm looking at possibly doing is if I can get enough people around the CCMP enterprise core topic, I will probably do like a Zoom study group where we can talk about um, spanning tree protocol, for example, and kind of go through that and answer questions and also um, try to reinforce learning with each other. But there you have it. That's it. Got Got to the decision before an hour. I think talking through it, I should definitely go for a CCMP Enterprise Core. I've got everything I need. Uh, is there anything else you guys would suggest I have in order to start CCMP Enterprise Core? Um, Lord Cotchley, you, you, you just passed your CCNA. Congratulations. That's, uh, that's fantastic. I think you should start, maybe join me on the CCMP Enterprise Core journey, studying for this thing. Uh, Jace, you... You like to schedule the exam, but to put pressure on myself, and it's usually free to push out if you do it 24 hours before. Yeah, that's exactly the thought, is if you just schedule it out, that's your goal, right? Um, schedule it, 
so in this case, I was scheduled it about 60 to 70 days out. And then that's your, that's what you, that's what you're going to aim for. Right. I just don't do that. I don't like that. I end up just keep pushing it out. <laughs> I like to know if I'm prepared or not to take CCMP within that amount of time. But, um, you know, teach your own, like if, if that's going to push you definitely do it. Um, uh, I just know I have a lot of hiccups in, in my life that in my schedule that some things would just get pushed out anyways, but that's just me and my excuses. Uh, Erwin, good to see you on here. So you like the plan. All right, cool. So I'll share, I'll share it on the discord server. Um, if there's anything else you guys think should be used for studying. I mean, you got the book, the lab, uh, got a community of people for support and learning with each other the exam topics so definitely read the exam topics read them carefully and the words that they use in those objectives because there are words like explain analyze uh, differentiate so you don't need to know how to configure those things unless they say configure or troubleshoot right there's a lot of words like explain and describe uh, and so the, the core piece of any configurations on the infrastructure uh, section. So James, uh, Vu, that's what you did. You got it pushed because of COVID, which got you a little extra time. Yeah. So I, I saw people taking the exam on at home, and I just if I showed my camera right now, uh, I think the guy would want to take down everything. I don't know. <laughs> I'll wait for the uh, exam environment plus. Um, I have uh, too many distractions here at home. Like my kids could come in at any moment and who knows if the, the proctor goes, you know what, cancel the exam. But uh, Jay, share the study plan. Uh, yeah, I could share the study plan, no problem. Um, let me see if I can just create a link and put it out in the chat. So what I'm doing right now is just, because I did it in Google I will copy the link and you guys will get it in the chat. So let me know if you could see this or if you can get that study plan. Uh, what is the second best option you think for people without Cisco modeling labs? I have, I've had nothing but problems with GNS3. So that's, that's from Jace, right? Jace, uh, so GNS3, so I used to use GNS3 and the biggest issue with me for GNS3 was trying to find images to use with gns3 and then getting those images to work and that's that's why i just made that investment to cisco modeling labs um uh if you can save up some money i think it's about i don't know how much it, i don't remember now let's see cmlp let's look at cisco modeling labs i'm just going to look it up uh, i don't remember how much it was to purchase it but uh, I decided uh, for CCMP, if, if you really want it and you, want, you don't want to spend the time trying to figure out how to make the platform work just so you can do labs, then CMLP might be a good start. The other thing you could do is if you go to developer.cisco.com, they have a lot of labs that you could use um, that are available to schedule. And then you could create... Uh, a, a, a design there and actually work it that way you could you could use cmlp in a devnet lab so there's that's one way to do it as well um other than that uh gns3 is probably the only way to go or eve ng it's just a matter of figuring out how to how to make that work so yes two hundred dollars if you can get your workplace to to support you on that and use it as a way to test things out prior to deployment or for study efforts, uh, go for it. Um, and who knows, uh, might, might do a giveaway for CMLP. If, if people really need it, I, I could probably do something like that, set something up because I think CMLP is perfect for, for studying for um, uh, CCMP. But yeah, $200 US dollars. It, it's not as a hefty, you, you just have to have the, infrastructure to to support cmlp it is kind of re resource intensive so i have um i have used it on an intel nook it's an i7 intel processor 
but on my new lab, it's an Intel Xeon processor with about 32 gigs of RAM. So it's a pretty powerful server that I have for just labs. Um, so that's just something to consider is look at the requirements to run CMLP and be sure you have the infrastructure to run it. Any other questions before we end the live stream? So after this, I'm going to figure out if I have time today to study at least chapter one. <laughs> chapter one's just, I think, theory, not so much labs. But after this, I am going to uh, take my son out for uh, some exercise with shelter in place. He's been sitting on the couch all day. We, I just built a gaming PC, so now he's going to be even more stationary. <laughs> he wants to play uh, Ark and Minecraft. I want to play some games as well. I, I think uh, that's the other thing is too much work and study is not good for you. So the way I handle that is by doing things even like this, like a live stream, but um, there's a, still a lot of thought that goes into it. And so I use video games as a way to just escape and reset and relax. So built a gaming PC for that. So I'm looking um, at what games I should get. But other than that, uh, I got to be sure I don't do too much gaming and focus on some more on the CCMP stuff. Uh, hopefully the plan that I laid out works. I will be following that plan. And if you're ahead of me or you, you see something that, that doesn't make sense, let me know in that, with that plan. So were you guys able to access that, that uh, CCMP plan? Yeah, it looks like you see someone... So, uh, there's someone anonymous looking at it. So it looks like it is available there. The links don't work. I haven't set up the, the links yet. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you found something useful out of this. I hope you'll join me to study for the CCMP. And we can all say we've passed. And um, in the future, I will be doing some CCNP study groups via Zoom and uh, do some live labs. So there you go. That's it. I hope you guys enjoy yourself. Have a great rest of your day and weekend. Stay safe out there. Uh, if you're going to go protest, please do it safely. Uh, I want to see you back here on the live stream and, and studying for CCNP as well. And if you again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Hit me up on Twitter. I am uh, at Roel Dionisio on Twitter. Always active on there. Or join the Discord server that I have set up for network engineering. As I've called it Network Junkies. So you can uh, go to joinnetworkjunkies.com to sign up for, for your Discord server there. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate you for joining me here today on a Saturday morning. And I will see you guys on the next show version live stream. Thanks, guys.